Welcome to The Magic of You on 105.9 Seaside FM. Good morning and welcome to The Magic of You for April 26th. I'm Krista Cook and I'm here with my co-host Holly Poole. Good morning, Holly. Good morning. Today's guest is Lucia Jacob. Good morning, Lucia. Good morning, Holly. Good morning, Krista. I would like to, first of all, tell folks a little about you, Lucia, before we get into everything. Now, Lucia is passionate about humans and animals. As a mother of two, animal owner and animal professional, Lucia has always strived to provide the best for those under her care and clients who trust her to train and provide assistance for their animals. Now, Lucia has over 20 years direct experience as an animal professional. She's a certified groomer for dogs and cats. She's a dog trainer and an advanced animal communicator. She is continuously studying the Pirelli system, which is natural horsemanship. Her range of experience includes animal education, dealing with animal illness, behavioral issues, and animals transition through death. Now, Lucia has also worked with and mentored a number of veterinarians worldwide as a consultant and provides valuable experience in assisting clients to embrace the value and in integrating veterinary and energy medicine. Wow, good morning. What a pleasure. So glad you can make it. So glad to be here, Krista. Thanks. And uh, thanks for having me in Nova Scotia. Oh, gosh. Well, yes, we got to tell folks what brought you here. But first <laughs> of all, let's start What is animal communication? What is animal communication? Like how do you like how do you communicate with an animal? Uh, What is animal communication? Is listening to the animal and uh, picking up information at what I call an intercellular level or nonverbal, and translating it through our brain centers and uh, turning it into an English language for us. <laughs> how do you do it? <laughs> yeah, like how do you do it? Well, I'd like to say I don't know. That would be about 15 <laughs> seconds or less. <laughs> I think we remember our innate ability to uh, communicate non-verbally is really how we do it. We allow ourselves to remember that we can. So I guess coming back to just even thinking about our pets, Lucia, uh, you know, around our home, do you think our pets are communicating to us at all times? Uh, I think they're communicating 24-7. The fact that we forget that we can do it non-verbally, they're telling us with their body language and their behaviors. And unfortunately, a lot of the time we misinterpret those behaviors and their body languages, and uh, we take it in the negative a lot of times. So a dog might be peeing in the house and chewing the furniture while you're gone all day, but he's trying to tell you, I really miss you, right? And I need to be in a different place while you're gone. And and so I think even when we think about, uh, you know, health issues with our pets, and let's just think about a dog, for instance, um, you know, are you of the belief system that if there is a health issue with an animal, sometimes it is something they are picking up around the house? Uh, number one, I think that the animals are trying to tell us when they have health issues and they're trying to use their body by possibly chewing in one area a lot or uh, with cats, they'll uh, go to the bathroom outside of the litter box trying to say they have a bladder infection. Number one, I think they're trying to tell us all the time if we could listen. And I do agree that they are taking on our illnesses and imbalances as a form of trying to help us. Holographically, they're in that energy field so much that their body starts to manifest the similar illness amazing they are okay now i have to ask you should you talk out loud to your pets yes because i think you should for for every but like i do i no doubt i'm talking to my pet and i have no idea if he can understand me what is the good behind that i think that before we speak verbally we send images and energy and that the words follow that imagery or energy so the animal has actually already picked it up when it's an image or an energetic form but we're just revalidating it with our words so therefore it sounds like they're listening to us talking but they've already picked it up so the speaking is careful what you say or careful what you think (laughs) careful what you wish (laughs) oh my (laughs) i've often thought too you know sometimes if you want the cat to go outside and you think oh well i'm going to fool the cat but the cat's already tuned into that right yep and the and the cat already knows when you're going on a holiday a week or two before Right. That's why they jump really? in the suitcase and yeah. doesn't uh, allow the suitcase to be packed. Basically, exactly. Or, or it reminds you where you've left your suitcase from the last trip. Mm-hmm. But how can that be? I mean, I, I hear your words. I understand what you're saying. But really. How quantum do you want me to get? Well, you know, I guess 
I, I need it to be uh, a little deeper. I need to understand. So quantum physics involved here? I think it's hugely involved, and it's exciting that we're at a time when the quantum physicists are helping to validate how and possibly why we're picking up information, and particularly precog, as the animals have strong precog. And what is precog? The precognizant abilities to know something's going to happen before it physically happens. So, for instance, with our other dog at home, his name is Button, he honestly, he will go to the door and within probably three to five minutes, whoever we're expecting to come home comes home. Yeah. Rupert Sheldrake uh, wrote a great book called uh, When Dogs Know When Their Owners Are Coming Home. And he did a study that he validated on video and uh, that animals know when you create the thought at work to come home. And they're already waiting at the thought, no matter where you are in the world. Wow. Yeah, that's that's really all. quite uh, <laughs> interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Because, oh, but it reminds me, you know, I was in the San Francisco earthquake wow. in 1989, and about uh, 45 minutes, you could time it, 45 minutes previous to any of the aftershocks, the dogs would start barking, and they would be crazy. Yeah, let's talk about the elephants and the tsunamis. Oh, and okay, let's. <laughs> You know, how do they know that the tsunami is on its way and they try and get the people to safety? And at the simultaneous, our animals at our own homes, no matter where they are in the world, a lot of them will pick up that tsunami, even if it's at the other end of the world. When we look at our animals and their behavior, the day or a few days or even a week before these uh, cataclysmic events, they are feeling it in the field. It's already unfolding in uh, the what, what some people call the field. Uh, Gene Taggart wrote the book, The Field, uh, the matrix or the energy configuration in the universe. They're picking up on that. So maybe we're perceiving reality in the past when we see it happen, and they are living in the now of when it already is. I have totally underestimated my pets. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have. And, you know, I am traveling all over the world teaching a class that I call Linking Awareness, Intercellular Communication, because I think it's time that we listen to the animals and really truly listen and glean some wisdom from them uh, and uh, realize that they've been helping us for eons. Okay, when you say now our listeners are out there going, okay, she wants me to listen to the animals. What exactly? Does she just want me to sit here and listen to them bark? Like, what exactly? What should they look for? Um... I talk about uh, going into your imagination, remembering when you were a child and you daydreamed and you were in a world of imagination in your heart's eye, actually, not your mind's eye, but in your heart. And uh, I met a shaman in the jungles of Malaysia who had the wild tigers laying beside him. And when I asked him, how do you do that? Like, how do you talk to them? And he giggled, and the translator giggled and told me, it's all in his imagination. He imagines the tiger there, and then before you know it, the tiger shows up and lays beside him. It's amazing, I'm s- Andy. Andy. <laughs> I just don't know what to say. I wish you guys could see her face. <laughs> but it's just, I, and I think sometimes... When when we look at our animals, I mean, how often have we heard it's just a dumb animal, which is yeah. so sad. Isn't it sad? Um, but when we but look- you're just a dumb kid when you can talk to them. Aren't you? <laughs> I, I agree. I agree. And I think it's also sad too that you know intuition of any kind is thought of how silly that is. Yeah. When. In reality, if our subconscious just allowed ourselves to take over that intuition and to listen. And that takes me back to one of your first questions is uh, how can we once again uh, listen to our animals? We have accumulated lifetimes of belief systems, ideas, attitudes around the fact that it's not possible. So even as a child, if I come running down the the yard and say to my mother, oh, my dog, my dog, he, he wants to go down the street and play with his friend. Can I take him right now? And she goes, that must be your imagination. That's crazy. That's silly. Your dog can't talk to you. That starts to create these belief systems that hold us back from the potential that we are. Mm-hmm. And it shuts down the subconscious. You know, it, right? sh- it shuts down an aspect of ourself that is capable of doing amazing things. And that is so sad. I mean, I think that's what I've loved about all the guests I've met doing this show. Totally have opened awareness so that you don't shut down and that you know it is there and that it exists. I really agree, and and that's why I think that this class got coined linking awareness, because we have the ability to link 
our awareness that we think is separate with anything, whether it's nature, animals, in utero children, nonverbal children, and we can link with them and become one. And so within our imagination, there they are having a conversation with us. Is that why animals are so good for children? You know, you have children, it's usually, oh, we get an animal. Or um, there's a lot of talk about seniors having access to dogs or cats. What does that do for them? I think it should be mandatory, first of all. (laughs) Yeah, I think uh, uh, dogs, cats, horses, dolphins, just to name a few that we're aware of, have an amazingly huge heart field. And when we talk about the heart and living in the now, the animals are masters. So this energy of the heart field creates a resonance that when we merge with it or we're close to it, it changes our blood pressure, it changes our heart rates, it changes our state of mind. It's healing. And so would you suggest, let's say you have cats or dogs, kind of hard to do this with a horse, but anyway, (laughs) just just sort of sitting on the floor sometime and just chatting with them, just having a chat, you know, how you doing, what kind of a day are you having? And Um, I think it's therapeutic. Uh, and I think we can do it with a horse, and a lot of us do just sit out in the field with the horse in their energy field. Whether we're not speaking or whether we're speaking, we're communing with them, and we're taking that time just to be. And that's one of their big messages is get back into the heart and just be. You've forgotten. You're so busy in the world running around being busy all the time thinking you're doing things. (laughs) I love that, (laughs) thinking you're doing things. (laughs) When you're just going in circles. (laughs) And as for talking to them, I think it's therapeutic how many of us never talk to any thing, anybody about things in our lives, but we'll sit quietly when no one's around with the horse, the cat, the dog, the bird. Let's not forget the birds. Mm-hmm. And we'll tell them what's going on. That letting go and that speaking what's holding, what we're holding on to, they're listening. you know. And then tell them, hey, thanks for listening, but you don't have to hold on to it either. Exactly. There's going to be a whole conversation. I have a rabbit, two dogs, and two birds. I'm going to have an awful and big chat don't, tonight. Yeah, and the turtles and the mice and the gerbils. You know, your kids have some amazing pets, too. They're spiders. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> They're geckos. That's right. So you believe anyone can access information from their pets? I'm at the point now where I know. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so the fact is, let's make that a definite statement. You are facilitating, and there is a workshop coming up mm-hmm. that is through Animal Talk, which is part of Body Talk. Now, I would like... I, I just need to clarify okay, that. Okay, sorry. So uh, the Body Talk system right. has courses that I do teach, uh, beginners and advanced, and oh, it's I'm Body sorry. Talk for okay. Animals. Uh, and then because of my years of animal communication and realizing that I was getting information with the animals, Uh, I finally relented to the animal's voice and said, I'll put together a class called Linking Awareness Intercellular Communication. But that's really what led me to the body talk system because here I was getting all kinds of information from the animals and what do you do with it? I work hand in hand with the veterinarians and the veterinarians and I would sit there sometimes and go, there's something missing. There's a gray area. We've got this great information. We've got our tests, but there's something else the animals are, are trying to ask for. And body talk came around and now I'm being able to implement body talk system as an energy consciousness based uh, healing modality and support the animal's healing process. Thank you. We are going to come back in just a moment and we are going to talk more about this fascinating subject. This is the magic of you on 105.9 Seaside FM. Welcome back to the last half of the magic of you for April 26th. We have the privilege of having Lucia Jacob in the studio with us. And we're talking about animal communication. We are talking about linking awareness with animals and humans. And we're also going to touch on body talk access for animals. Now, I know that you were mentioning um, before we went on break about the linking awareness. Now, you have a body talk access for animals coming up. Would you like to tell folks about that? 
The Body Talk system is an internationally uh, renowned healing system. It is based on energy medicine or consciousness medicine. And uh, we, I teach it all over the world. I teach a lot of different classes for humans to become practitioners, for lay people to uh, work in third world countries. I work in orphanages and teach them healing techniques. But we also offer that for uh, lay people and animal owners as well as veterinarians and advanced classes, which I also teach. So basically we take our intuitive information uh, that the animal gives us and we use a system called the body talk system to help to reestablish communication within their systems because within the animal system quite often there's things that aren't communicating. So the class I'm teaching this weekend is a basic uh, class for uh, a day and a half. We teach five basic healing techniques, one that uh, works with the brain, one that works with uh, relaxing the brain, one that works with um, hydrating the body at a cellular level, a body chemistry technique that deals with microbes and viruses and toxins, and another technique that helps turn on the energy switches so the animal can heal more effectively, and also a fast aid technique. So basically, uh, in in summation, uh, giving the layperson five techniques that they can use with their animals to help support their health on an ongoing basis, and therefore supporting the veterinarians, whether they're in surgery, neutering, spayings, for the animal to heal faster and stay healthy. And prevent some illnesses? Uh, I I think so, because I think that when we do these types of techniques with our animals, it helps them to lead a life that's less stressful. And we know that stress creates disease and illness, so therefore it's very preventative. Uh, it's we've had huge results coming back and even amazing miraculous healings from a basic one and a half day class. Now, where is this class taking place? Well, that's why I'm in Nova Scotia. I've been invited by Namaste Nova, which is a beautiful up-and-coming retreat in the area, and they are hosting all kinds of classes throughout the year, uh, body talk, linking awareness. Um, they're going to be doing a lot of amazing work with the horses because horses are amazing healers. So Kelly there is going to be starting some work where people can come and have healings with the horses. So it's a super place. I hope you can come by. If nothing else, come and see their uh, Uh, location that is you said a day and a half let us give them specifics that would be so april 30th to may 1st on april 30th it's from 2 to 6 p.m and on may 1st it's from 9 30 to 5 30 so where is it located um i'm just sort of uh, lost with my days here because the linking awareness will be starting thursday uh, evening And I just don't know the date of it, I'm sorry, of the Thursday, this Thursday. And then the Friday would be linking awareness all day. And then the morning of the Saturday would be linking awareness. Then we go into the Body Talk Access class, which is the Saturday afternoon and all day Sunday. And you're welcome to please bring your own dogs and cats and birds. We have horses on site that you can interact with. And you can choose to take one class, both classes, uh, or no classes and just listen in, uh, in your imagination. It would be very, very interesting. Now, Holly, what do you think? Well, I think, I mean, I think it's just so, so important to actually be able to talk with our animals. As uh, Lucia says, our animals are communicating with us all the time. And, um, you know, I think back to I had a Maine Coon cat previous to the Maine Coon cat that I have now. (laughs) And I used to be able to go outdoors, and without even opening my mouth, I would be able to call Casey. Just intuitively sending it out, and he would arrive. Exactly. And I think if we take a moment to breathe between when we're talking all the time, we can already start to realize that we are having that communication. Uh, So just stay in silence a little bit longer. And sometimes when I just teach just a regular intuition, having nothing to do with animals, (laughs) you think? um, (laughs) I say, you know, it's a good idea just to allow yourself to play sometimes exactly and if you're wrong it doesn't matter exactly but you're given the subconscious the permission exactly to open right yeah yeah just remember to be childlike say in your imagination play and yeah what's the worst thing that can happen you're wrong Mm -hmm. oh well right so the dalai lama always mentioned that remember be a child Mm. enjoy your life go back to that state all work and no play. <laughs> and I think that's we called the belief system. <laughs> <laughs> we also come back to you know the many years as you mentioned of training, whereby it's silliness to listen to your intuition, and all that is done is 
pushed down yeah. the subconscious. Yeah. So just as you say, by allowing ourselves to play, allowing ourselves, oh, well, if we're wrong a little bit, not a big deal, we're opening yeah. that subconscious. Well, yeah, and I would welcome uh, some of you that are listening to come on some of my trips where we go to southern Sumatra and work with 63 elephants and listen to the element, elephants. 63 elephants? 63 elephants, elephants yes. How Asian wonderful. elephants. And oh, magnificent. Uh, it is amazing. And then we do trips like we go to Bimini and we talk to the dolphins and we interact with them. And I'll be going into Kruger Park in Africa and working with the wild elephants and the lions. And then we work with our domestics when I'm in locations like this. So the sky's the limit. If we could come back, the, the veterinary uh, yes, so- side of life. Thank you. Um, do you think that's opening any for us? Yes. I am so blessed to be working with amazing veterinarians all over the world. And uh, one of my favorites that I like to talk about is Dr. Lai in Singapore. We are working together open in integrative practice, which includes body talk, animal communication, massage therapy, veterinary medicine, and all kinds of uh, complementary. And, you know, the word that everyone's been using in the past has been alternative. Well, I would like to use the word complementary and integrative Mm -hmm. because the veterinarians will use people, whether it's for medical intuitive work, to help listen to the animal so the animal has a voice in relation to their illness and what they're going through. So the veterinarians are stepping on board, and uh, it's just a beautiful teamwork. I think we're seeing a change in all of the health care system. I'm certainly hoping that we are. And uh, if we can begin or work with uh, starting with the vets, with the yes. animals, wouldn't that be fantastic? Yeah, and we are. And, uh, and I would like to say to any veterinarians who are listen- listening, uh, thank you very much because I realize that we've been amazingly trained and from a left brain stance. So you're opening your minds and the animals are thanking them in their clinics. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a great way to go. I mean, let's face it, the more and more that we use these complementary modalities, I mean, it can only be good. There's lots of pieces to a puzzle, hey? And yes. we're just adding some that have been missing for a long time. For a long time. Yeah. And have been there. I think people have just been invisible to those pieces. Yeah. They were laying on the floor, I think. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> Lucia, I would love to know and for you to tell us all of the websites that uh, people can check out in terms of yourself and everything that you can offer. So uh, one of my websites is www.fullcircle333.com. And my other one is, uh, you're going to have to spell though, it's Lucia Global, www.loesje global g l o b a l dot ning that's n is a norman i n is a norman g dot com that will thread you to a few other sites uh, luciaadventure dot com luciaglobaladventures dot com full circle training dot ning dot com but they'll all thread together and please look at them because I also do amazing work with orphanage children bringing youth from all over the world to teach orphanage children complementary techniques so that they can maintain their health and uh, uh, wellness because they don't have access to doctors like we do in the Western communities. So we go into Indonesia and uh, looking at Africa and as well back in Japan. We go into areas where there's been tsunamis and we go back and give them some healing techniques to help themselves as they're coming out of the crisis. So as you can see, the animal and the youth kingdom is a great passion of mine and also fullcirclefilms.com because we're working with media to help to create awareness at a global level that uh, there's a lot more going on than we ever knew. If I could just take us back for a second, Lucia, could you just re-spell your name one last time? Yeah. Uh, Thanks to my dad, by the way. (laughs) Uh, L-O-E-S-J-E. It's pronounced Lucia. In Dutch, it's Lucia. And we will have that on our website as well, so that'll make it uh, very quick. So if you don't get the spelling... Don't worry about it. As long as you can make it to the magicofview.ca, you'll be fine. Yeah. I'd also like to share the Body Talk website. It's www.bodytalksystem.com. And you will also be able to find uh, Nova Scotia Body Talk. Mm -hmm. They also have a website. BTNS. BTNS. NS. 
Ca. .ca. And uh, Kelly is also teaching uh, basic body talk for humans in our area, so please give her a call. Well, and as we say every week, we're so grateful because Body Talk Nova Scotia has been a sponsor, and uh, we, well, we just can't thank them enough. Now, I want to just take a moment. Next week, we're going to discuss chakras, right, Holly? That's correct. The chakras within the body and how to, uh, how to keep your chakras clean. <laughs> Animals have chakras, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh. That'll, that'll roll in with this show. Are they Excellent. the same chakras? The concepts are the same. Oh, okay. Their expression of it may be a little different, but they're still animals, right? They love being animals. And we're animals. On a, on a Some of us yes. love being humans. Yeah, <laughs> some. <laughs> so next week we'll be talking about chakras. Okay, ways to reach us. If you go to themagicofyou.ca, you'll be able to access YouTube, iTunes, Facebook. The shows go on Blog Talk Radio as well. Um, and we have the guest link. We also always sort of have our promo for the following week, so you know who's coming up. I would say, have I forgotten anything, Holly? Your quote. Oh, I actually, I have three quotes to do with <laughs> animals, and I have to try to pick the best one. I might have to read a couple of them. All right, the quote going out is... Animals are such agreeable friends. They ask no questions. They pass no criticisms. That quote was by George Eliot. How about this? An animal's eyes have the power to speak a great language. And that's by Martin Buber. Until next week, remember, we all have the magic within us to create the reality we desire. Take care. Have a great week. The Magic of You is a production of Voice Waves Atlantic.